Uh, nine you don't see you, brother. Right. Suck this. <laughs> Give me this, mother. <laughs> Get in the ring. We sign the contract, <laughs> bitch. You know, everybody, I just want everybody to know Jamal Charlo, he's on my show, and I'm going to show him how to get the Nello fight because I believe that's what boxing need. Mike Tyson, listen, in this video, I'm going to go over what Mike Tyson said to Jamal Charlo live in his face when Charlo was a guest star on the Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson show. This video will cover everything, and I'll do a great job of illustrating that the link will be in the description. So let's have at it. He tells Jamal Charlo what he thinks Charlo can do to get the Canelo fight. Bay, they, you want Bay, they, I know that. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Listen, the last 28 days, I looked at my YouTube analytics and it showed me something. It says 50% of you that consume my content subscribe. So much love. I appreciate y'all. That means the other 50% in the last 28 days that consume my content, Boxing Ego, the best in the business, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be, did not subscribe. Maybe you forgot. Maybe it slipped your mind. Maybe you thought you were subscribed. Sometimes YouTube unsubscribes people. But whatever the case is, let's get it cracking. 2022, let's go. Now, Follow me at Boxing Ego One on the gram. I'm dropping the hotness. Listen, we making the illest noise. I'm dropping the illest noise. Mike Tyson explains to Jamal Charlo how he believes he could get the fight with Jamal with Canelo Alvarez, and we're gonna hear what Sir Mike had to say. I, I seen him at the I fight, the last Canelo fight. I, I, and he was over there ringside kind of calling them out, I felt like. You know, I don't know what he said, but it looked like he wanted some of that. Uh, like, nah, it's too brother. friendly. It's right, too right. friendly. Man. You got me like the Reverend Bird of the Man. Suck this. <laughs> Give me this, motherfucker. Get in the ring. We find the contract, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, when you in this business, your whole purpose is to crush the world to your feet, man. Motherfucker out there think he could beat you. Get the fuck out of here. Facts. So he said he got to take a page from Roberto Duran playbook and, you know, just get rugged and gully on him. Like, F this and mother, just stuck this and mother. And I want to know what you guys think. Really, my thoughts, my thing is this. Mike Tyson is one of my favorite fighters of all time. Mike Tyson comes up in an era where boxing, just to be frank, he's in great shape right now, too. He's 55 years old. He's still the most ruthless, the most meanest. Even with all these colors on, he's still Mike Tyson. He's, it's perpetual motion. It's kinetic energy. I'm trying to tell you. Right? He's still the baddest man. One of my favorite fighters. But my thing is this. Mike Tyson, some of the stuff he was saying to me, to be honest, was, was a bit weird. He was saying on the podcast that Errol Spence should move up to 154 and fight against his friend and stablemate, also trained by Derek James and who is the brother of the guy that was the guest star which is Jamal Charlo he's saying that fight should happen so to me that really didn't make sense and then as far as his his comments about he he's too nice I mean I guess yeah you know to each his own but I I personally think Canelo is a diva and Canelo's gonna move how he wants to do. So you gotta understand in the in this current age of boxing, this ain't yesteryear when Mike Tyson was fighting. For starters, we live in a different society and a PC culture where if you say too much crazy stuff, like the stuff Mike Tyson was saying back in the day, cancel culture would get you. That's not my opinion, that's a fact. You heard the baby, he said whatever he said, and I'm not condoning it, because I don't really care. You know, I didn't say it, but the baby said what he said at a concert rolling loud and they try to get him barred from everything because they didn't like what he said. So we're in a different climate where you can't say suck this and suck that and kiss my mother. Good night. Like Eddie Murphy said, and then just, you know, throw out all these things and it'll be accepted. Like I've even seen press conferences where the people on stage, they seem very uncomfortable when they can't contain the situation. You know what I mean? I remember 
Dominique Brazil and Deontay Wilder. I went to that press conference. They didn't like each other. And Wilder is that type of like Wilder was doing everything that Mike Tyson is telling Jamal Charlo to do. And he still didn't get the Anthony Joshua fight. So it's those days. The Tyson days is gone because, first of all, you had guys fighting for different reasons, not necessarily even making the type of money some of these guys are making. These are the, the harsh truth. So you had guys who were like they were just some boxers didn't even necessarily want to fight. They just needed to make an earnest living and they knew how to throw hands and they knew how to fight. Some of the, this new generation is different. You got people, Ryan Garcia, he pulled out of a fight with anxiety. You ain't never seen that in the 80s or 70s or Muhammad Ali's generation. People fought with broken jaws. Muhammad Ali fought with a broken jaw. Do your research. So it, it, we're just in a different time. And it, it's, it's dope because Mike Tyson, he an OG in the game. But the advice, I seen a lot of people rocking with it and like on you know boxing twitter or whatever and they're like yeah yeah but all that yeah yeah rah rah stuff ain't ain't the ticket either you know what i mean because we're in a completely different climate of boxing and it's funny because when the charlos get ignorant and yell and scream and cuss people out and you know rant and this stuff then y'all get mad at that and then now mike tyson is is egging that on and saying that the, the way to get the Canelo fight is to not be too nice. So yeah, Charlo could violate, he could be disrespectful, but then a lot of y'all, especially the racists in boxing, they would say, oh, he's unprofessional, and why is he acting like a hooligan? He's a thug, T-H-U-G, thug life. And then they'd be mad at that, and it would be all over TMZ. Because anytime anything bad happens to either Charlo, like they get arrested or whatever, you know, these are the things that, you know, immediately get broadcast by everyone. I cover everything. So if they get arrested, they get arrested. I make videos about that. But I also made videos about Sergey Kovalev when he got arrested as well. But there's a lot of people, old media, they don't necessarily do that. They only glorify it typically when it's certain fighters, especially black fighters. So I, I really don't like this. Um, this almost stigma that black fighters got to get ignorant and you know, act crazy and rah, rah, rah. But then guys like NOA, Inui or whoever, or Lomachenko, they can get fights and they don't have to, like Lomachenko, they're saying he might fight, Lomachenko might fight Cambosos and they're trying to get him out of the situation in Ukraine and all types of stuff. Well, how come Lomachenko, nobody ever advises him to, oh, you really want to fight Gervonta Davis, run up and push him and you know call his mama this and that and why why doesn't any other fighter outside of of black fighters to be frank the the whole scripture is not written for nobody else to have to do all that other stuff like loma he could just be a gold medalist and a nice guy and get whatever fights that he won like he can get the teofimo fight but then when devin want to get george cambosos he got a trash talk on Twitter and, you know, they want everybody to be like Adrian Broner. So I don't really co-sign the message that I was hearing from Mike in, in regards to what he needs to do to get Canelo. Because as I stated earlier in this video, I think Canelo is a diva. So at the end of the day, Canelo Alvarez could say what he did to Demetrius Andrade and just front him off and say, oh, you disrespected me. Now you'll never fight me. And he's in the position and has the power to do that. So I don't necessarily think disrespecting canelo is the way because canelo he has a reputation so at the end of the day he could just say oh you want to violate you'll never get a payday from me let me know how i did in this video i'm out are you tired of your youtube videos not getting any views well consider tubebuddy i've used tubebuddy for years to scale up my youtube channel now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description.
customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation.